Hey, welcome to Dismantling the Car Bomb. Uh, fun fact. This song is a fun fact. Fact, fun fact, fun, fun fact, fun fact. Yeah, I almost broke it once again. I actually managed to crack the jewel case one hour after the purchase, after the Budapest gig, uh, in a fun park at night. Don't ask too many questions. So, if you're subscribed to my channel, chances are that you've probably heard about Carbomb. But if you're not subscribed, I will link my three Carbomb covers to the ending screen of this video. Also, it turns out that this video that I'm filming right now is over 45 minutes, so I will break it into parts. So, what are we going to do here today? We are going to discuss about uh, what happens under the hood <laughs> of the Carbomb. Uh, of this album, of this song actually. We are going to show all the riffs and how to play the riffs on the guitar and we are going to talk about the rhythm manipulation and all the magic that happened there um, as this song is just like a fractal. This song and this album is a bit underrated and overlooked so yeah, I'm here to fix that. This video will be incomplete without me playing the actual song also, I made a cover of this song back in 2014 and I kinda cringe with the uh, video quality there. This time it's shot on 50 FPS. This is the best my camera can do. It will be easier to, uh, to put the rate of the video slower and watch closely what is going on. So, fun fact number one. You probably noticed that the way from uh, album the name of it is the pattern of the first riff of the sentinel there is this video that was uploaded i think on elliot's profile the drummers it shows exactly how this works and i will show it to you now pretty cool right fun fact number two so this pattern is not only at the first riff, it is at the second riff, it is at the third riff, the fourth, and so on. You get the picture. This uh, pattern is applied throughout the entire song except the final riff. I will show you how well this is disguised uh, and manipulated uh, in the next series of videos. Fun fact number three the band never recorded this album to a metronome. What? <laughs> Yeah, that's insane. Um, you know, I, I like how they pulled off uh, those jackhammer, as they call them, type riffs with the syncopated uh, double bass and the guitar. Usually stuff like that um, sound really mechanical, uh, which is cool. I like mechanical sounds. I mean, talking about uh, Fear Factory here, Cybreed, uh, Devolved. Somehow Carbon makes that stuff sound really human and bouncy and unpredictable which is something you don't really get with uh, today's modern metal acts all right so please stick to the end of this series because um, i'm going to be sharing uh, some tips on how to learn any song that is uh, of this difficulty these are methods that i used for learning all of my carbon covers my animals as leaders cover and that cb murdoch cover which was extremely difficult as well so yeah, subscribe, man!
Man, that was rough. This song is meant to be played standing, not sitting. I wanted to sit down and really focus the camera on my right hand action because not many stuff is going on on the left hand and that's fine, I like that minimalistic approach I like it so much because there are so many things going on in this album it's insane <laughs> imagine having notes on it, it would be so lame yeah, this song preferably is meant to be played standing and yeah, it's the best position for the right hand actually because you know when, when the guitar is here it's very easy to get tired here and here. It's very important for uh, anyone who attempts to play that song to keep in mind that uh, stamina is a thing here, is a, is a real challenge here. And if you paid attention on my picking, I used, uh, I did some economy picking stuff there instead of doing this. <laughs> I did this. So let's talk about the tuning, the gear and all that stuff. Um, it, this song is tuned in uh, seven string, half step down or um, B flat standard in six string baritone. Uh, Greg uses used his uh, baritone of course this isn't a baritone sadly it's a 25.5 7 string um, I will use my 8 which is 27 inch scale but it, it will get messy with uh, showing you the riffs and the extra string on the top and stuff like that also I wanted to have the same pickups as Greg had on that record he used his uh, LTD or ESP, I don't remember exactly, and it had EMGs on it. Also, I, I used my XFX, but only for the effects, not for the rhythm tone. Let me see it, it's over here. I used the ring modulation and some pitch shifting. Uh, I actually controlled these with this little beast here. It's the Keith Macmillan Soft Step 2 and I hate it. No, I actually I like it so much but uh, it's a pain. This thing here has 10 pedals that can be used as uh, uh, as expression pedals and they they have sensitivity. So you can do shitload of stuff with it. If you have any questions just let me know. I'll write them down below and I will answer. The clean DI uh, goes to my uh, audio interface. For the distortion sounds I use this little guy here. <laughs> the beast. <laughs> also with the ring modulator just kills everything. I think it's time to head on to the first reef. So what do we have here? The first reef um, is roughly at 130 BPM uh, but that's about to change. Uh, <laughs> this reef is uh, in 12 by 8 but it can be... Uh, the pulse is uh, 7 and 5 groups of 7 and 5 but I like to keep things easier and I, I break it to smaller groups um, so it goes like 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 1 2 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 1 2 what the fuck is this bullshit for <laughs> alright so this is the main pulse in general and this riff contains more notes than that, of course, uh, in between. And they are six splits and they are groups of four notes and two notes. Right, this is in 
almost full speed, it's a little less actually. I will play it a bit slower for you. Slower. So we have the next riff here, uh, which is totally different, right? No, <laughs> it is the exact same with the previous one on the guitar only. Drums are totally different and this makes us perceive that riff as a different one. But it is the same picking pattern, exactly. Alright, so I will play the soloed uh, guitar track I did for the recording of this uh, cover and you will uh, you will have to guess if it's the first riff or the second one Right, the only thing that changes here is the, the, the way I mute the guitar or not. It was very tightly muted. And when the, the modulation came, it went a bit uh, heavier. And it sounds crazy, man. Th that metric modulation that Elliot does just takes the earth from your feet. <laughs> So, moving on to the third riff here, or actually the second riff, as the previous one is a variation of the first. So, here we have the same pattern again, the waveform pattern, and the thing is that instead of having six splits, four six splits uh, inside that W, we have uh, five 30 second notes. And instead of having two six splits after that, we have three 30 second notes. Also the, the tempo uh, rises, it's uh, roughly, yeah it's 190. Uh, also due to the metric modulation here all these tempos are um, relative to each other, So, but I don't want to mess with that right now, we're going to dive in deep shit. <laughs> I'm going to play it slow now. So, I will mute the string when the pattern is uh, complete and loops once again. And I like to count this uh, one like this. This really reminds me some Greek songs from the pond. And then again we have another metric modulation, 3 by 4 meter here. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. And the guitar remains the same, still plays the same riff as before. Only thing that changes is the, the note, instead of playing the second fret. Greg plays the open string. So, once again, Elliot is messing with our minds. And it sounds crazy having such a drastic change on the drums. So far the pattern continues to be the same. Then we have... Alright, what 
is going on here. Once again, uh, it's not really obvious because we have to zoom out. We have to look from a distance. What the fuck? I'm not crazy. <laughs> All right, guys, I will pause this video for now. Uh, I really appreciate the fact that you are still watching here with me, and uh, this video has taken so much time, but I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed talking about car bomb. The next part will be uploaded soon. I've uh, actually filmed everything about this video, it just needs so much editing. In the next video we're going to dive way deeper into car bomb land <laughs> and yeah, the remaining riffs are uh, much more difficult to grasp and the rhythm patterns actually get uh, very uh, intense and complex. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that's a sick exercise. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two. Oh my god. <laughs> this part almost broke me, man. I, I was compiling <laughs> an algorithm while playing it. Like, oh, it, it does the repeat here, now get prepared. Where do you hear it? I mean, I hear it like... Da, 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 da. And like I said, I will also share my tips and methods for learning any difficult song. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and that bell notification so that you will be notified whenever I post a video. I don't post like every day, I won't be spamming you. Um, I usually post once a week or sometimes twice or sometimes zero. Also, if you want to find more uh, Carbom friends, you can always join the group uh, on Facebook, which is, uh, which usually it, it was named uh, Carbomb Pew Posting, uh, but now it is uh, Alligator Cool because uh, April Fools happened, and yeah, uh, I believe uh, the name will change uh, at May first. <laughs> so I will leave a link below about that. I hope you all have a nice day and stay safe everyone, thank you very much, bye bye.